on both throwing and glazing coasters today. So I thought I'd do a super quick video of how I do the two of them. Uh, using the Hartley and Noble Russian Doll bat system. These are the 150 mil inserts. The really nice thing with these is that because they're so smooth, the clay will just pop off with basically a, a finished surface. So what I do, 150 grams of clay, and I'm throwing them essentially upside down. So the top as I'm throwing is what will become the bottom when they're thrown. Um, which means that it's very easy to, you can shape it and you can put your logo stamp on and all that stuff is done essentially while it's still on the bat and pre-trimming because there isn't really any trimming. Um, just get your ball centered and then ease the clay out like you would with a plate. Helps if you can brace against the wheel for this. You want to get a reasonable amount of compression in just the same reason as with plates, you'll prevent S cracks and things like that. Less important on these because they're smaller, but they're still worth doing. Then you can either burnish the top or smooth the top with a rib or put a swirl in or whatever you want. I use my fit trimming tool to round the edge and it leaves a slightly raised outer which is essentially when you've fired it that's the foot that it will sit on and that is that you can then just put them somewhere to dry slowly for a couple of days or probably a day for these to be honest and so tomorrow they'll pop off. What I'll do is, before they do that, I'll just smooth the edges once the clay is kind of leather hard. But um, yeah, leave them to pop off and then I'll show you how I place them in a sec. I meant to say at the end of that previous section about the Hartley and Noble um, Russian Doll Bat System, I've got previous videos on it if you want to see it in more detail, but um, they're currently doing an offer where if you give my name at checkout you'll get a free gift and then eventually I'll get a free gift as well. So if you're considering buying one, especially if you were considering buying one because of my review of it, um, just tell them that's who sent you and you'll get something free. Um, but this is how I, so this is a, a dark clay coaster. And here's two, you can see two different versions of the logo stamp option so I use the kind of more in-depth one in the middle of that one and my normal stamp if you've got anything from me that's the stamp it will have because I don't generally use that one for anything um, but either works because you're just stamping down onto it while it's still on the bat so it's you can use a very intricate stamp if you want uh, normally they don't work so well on the base of mugs because they'll just collapse it if you're not too careful but um, so Got wax resist, watered down, probably three to one, maybe a bit more than that. It helps it go on smoother. What I do is I center it in the Giffen grip and then back the um, grippers off so that I can get access to the side. And I'll wax resist just part way around the curve that I put on with my foot trimming tool. And then wax resist the center. That's for the dent puller to stick on. And I'll show you um, how that works in a second. Right, this is how I glaze them. So you've got coaster wax resistor on that side. I'd get my car dent puller. The uh, the link to this is on my recommended tools page on my website. Um, get it slightly damp so that it can make a better seal. Stick it to the bottom. Make sure there's no dust on the top. And then to avoid trapping air bubbles, I put it in at an angle and roll it around rather than just dunking straight in to start with. And with any luck, you've got an even coat across the whole surface um, and a nice 
edge where it hits the wax resist. So that can just sit on a kiln shelf, it shouldn't drip down as so long as you're using a glaze that you know won't run over that distance. Um, and you can just plonk them straight on the kiln shelf, fit loads in the kiln, and it's that simple. Right, and this is it after it's fired. Uh, I'll include some pictures of it as well. But as you can see, the bottom is unglazed, the top is glazed, you get a nice edge to it. And then this glaze is particularly nice on flat surfaces, it stays super glossy, but um, bubbles up so you get some really nice texture to it. That's it, finished coaster.